start. Hello, I'm Sunil Tolsiani, founder of Private Investment Club, and I'm so excited to have Michael Tracy, the, the, the son of Brian Tracy, amazing friends. And we're going to talk about what's going on in the world today. I mean, you all know about coronavirus, and I always want to get experts and get their input on what's going on, how long it's going to last, and their opinion on what to do next especially from health point of view, as well as from entrepreneurship, business point of view. What, are, what is it that they're doing? Michael, welcome to this uh, thank you, interview. Thank you, Sunil. It's won wonderful to be here. I, I, I appreciate you and, and your friendship. And let's, you know, let's have a conversation. I mean, we're, we're living in an unprecedented time. Uh, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of fear out there. Um, but when there's a lot of fear and there's a crisis, there's also unique opportunities. So we can, we can talk to that, talk about that a little bit. Awesome. Awesome. I want to share with you that uh, Michael uh, has come and spoken uh, to my crowd at the private investment club. We've shared stages at least twice and, and we're going to be sharing stage in, very sh shortly in Ottawa uh, with uh, your father coming um, by live feed. And you're actually coming to that event with uh, Jane and Steve Lowell, correct? That's exactly correct. Yes, I'm very awesome. excited about that. Yeah, awesome. Two, awesome. Two wonderful people. They are awesome. Yeah, I love those guys. Um, um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, coronavirus, um, tell me, um, how are you dealing with it? What advice would you give to people who are dealing with all the things that are happening in regards to health issues, but now everything's being shut down. Tell me. Right. Well, I mean, I think there's, there's, a whole, there's enormous amounts of fear and stress. Right? The coronavirus is literally shutting down the global economy. I mean, just like dominoes left and right. I mean, they just announced that uh, California is law and lockdown, right? Everybody yes. has to stay at home uh, yes. only for essential things like going to the grocery store. Uh, but I also, I also know that every generation and sometimes multiple times, you know, a government asks you to do a civic duty, like a civic responsibility, something that's inconvenient that you don't want to do, um, but you have to do it because ultimately this this virus is is detrimental to seniors. I mean, yes. it, it I think the death rate in the eighty the over eighty bracket is like twenty percent. Yes. So, you know, if we want to protect you know our parents, our grandparents. And we have to stay at home to reduce the curve. They're saying that 50, 60 percent of Americans will get the coronavirus at some point in the next two or three years. Um, but if we all get it at the same time, it's going to overwhelm the health systems. There's only, I think, something like 900,000 critical hospital beds in the United States. Um, and just based on back of the envelope math, you know, if everybody gets it, then there's going to be 10 million people that need those beds, and there's going to be 900,000 beds available. And then you have the situation like in Italy, they're triaging people. If you come into a hospital and you're over 70, they're giving you an oxygen tank if they have one and they're giving you a bed and saying, you know, I hope you survive. Yes. But they don't, they don't have the ventilators. They don't have the, the ICU beds. And so it is, I mean, it's, it is a human, it's a human tragedy. So, I mean, my advice is let's, let's listen and let's just stay at home. Yes. <laughs> you know? Stay at home and, and let's think. Let's think about, you know, how we can come through this stronger. Um, and so, I'm, I mean, I think one of the things that this will do is we'll get a lot of people more comfortable with, you know, virtualization, the virtualization of experiences, of products and services, of interacting socially th through things like this, like Zoom and Facebook Live. So because of that behavioral shift, I think there'll be a much larger market opportunity to, to build up virtual strategies. And so that's, that's, you know, that's what I'm going to do for the next, ho hopefully just the next 30 days. Hopefully this doesn't <laughs> turn into like a multi-month thing, but is I'm going to really work on my digital revenue streams, my virtual strategy and, and building, building, a, you know, a really great, wonderful audience online. Cause awesome. that's, well, I'll, I'll get, I'll come back to that because we want to really know how you're doing it and what some of the strategies people can use um, uh, to, to generate, um, income, uh, either now or shortly in the next few months and things like that. But let's talk about this, uh, your views on news. Tell me, uh, what, what, you know, tell us about how this being, uh, you know, tell us about that. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, okay. So I think when it comes to cable news, you, you have to realize that, you know, there it's a business and they're selling commercials. And so everything has to be sensationalized to a degree because 
they need you to stay tuned while they play all those commercials and play more news. They also repeat the same news over and over and over again. Um, and you know, I, I, I try to get my news sources from lots of things. I try to read the news. I try to read different, different newspapers because every news organization has their own bias. And, and then I come to my own conclusions about things. Um, what the wonderful thing about the internet and the de democratization of, you know, people going online is there's, there's like news sources like medium where you can actually read, you know, the, the really granular ground level news that, actually resonates personal experience people have personal experiences and they're, and they're writing about it so um and those personal experiences help inform what you think you should do i mean with the coronavirus specifically um i think that there's there's probably a lot more fear about yeah. it because of the news um but at the same time it is <laughs> It is really important that you know we're prudent and we're careful and we're washing our hands and staying at home so i mean i, I I, I think cable news is, should be in the box of entertainment. It's not news, right? It's, it's entertainment. If you want news, read it. Read your news. Read your news. Be entertained by your television. Okay, sounds good. So, so um, do you feel that people are less fearful or more fearful than the actual situation is? And if so, why? Well, I, I think if you're, if you're under, I don't know, 60, I don't think you need to be afraid for yourself. You know, and not and and maybe not for your kids either, because those demographics aren't being adversely affected. Uh, but if you have parents, if you have grandparents, then you should be scared for them, right? And you should be thinking about ways that you could mitigate this disaster for those older demographics. And I think being scared, having fear, is healthy to an extent. You know, it's it's healthy when it drives you to cautious action, um, thoughtful you know, deliberate decisions that make sense because of that healthy fear. If you're so fearful that you're paralyzed and panicked, that leads to things like, you know, getting in a fight at the grocery store over toilet paper, right? Or buying so much toilet paper, more toilet paper than you ever need in a lifetime. For, well, what's with for, that? What, what's with that? Well, what, why do you think people are doing that? Why, 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 why toilet papers? I mean, if you're fight, if we ran out of food and you go to grocery store and people are fighting for bread, I almost understand that. What, why do you think people are doing that? I think it's just, I think it's a space issue. I think it's a supply chain issue. Like there's only so many cases of toilet paper you can stick on a shelf, right? You yes. can stick tons of cans of beans on a shelf. Yes. Um, but if you talk about toilet paper, I mean, if you want to buy a, a, like a 12 pack of toilet paper, there's only like eight of those per brand that you can stick on that shelf. And so, but, what, what, but why are people buying uh, 10 and 20 or hundreds of those? I think it's, you know, I think it's a self reinforcing thing, right? So <laughs> you see somebody grabbing six cases of toilet paper, you're like, well, shh, if everybody's grabbing six, they're going to run out. I'm going to grab six. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you got two people in the store with, you know, six things of toilet paper, you're gonna be like, well, I need six cases of toilet paper too, if they're gonna do it. And eventually you got 10 people clearing out the entire toilet paper aisle. And now everybody's freaking out about toilet paper. I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's a manifestation of a state of panic is what it represents. And I have no idea what the utility would be of having that much toilet paper at your house exactly. because there's only so much you can actually use in any given day. I mean, maybe more so than, so some people use more than others, but I don't, <laughs> I, I find it kind of comical. I don't. I don't okay. Know. All right. Let's talk about what's, what you and I do, because there are a lot of people who are going to be watching this. Uh, there are, they're entrepreneurs. Uh, they're, they're full-time, they have side gig, they're, they're, they're maybe they're doing a part-time basis. And um, what impact do you see on businesses globally than businesses in U.S. and Canada? And, and locally, just your thoughts on what's going to happen to the businesses as overall. And then we're going to get into different types of businesses. Well, I, I, think, I think economic activity, to a large extent, is going to slow down quite a bit. And that's because non-essential businesses are just not going to operate, right? That their employees have to stay at home. Their services aren't required at this moment. Um, travel has stopped. You know, gas prices are super cheap, but nobody's going anywhere, right? So I think... What we're looking at is just a, a, a huge uh, slowdown in economic activity. If you're a small business owner doing something that's non-essential, you, you need to batter down the hatches. You know, uh, you need to conserve cash as much as possible. You have to wind things down. 
Um, if you have employees, you know, you have to figure out ways to, so they can obviously eat and live, but I mean, you, you can't pay them like they're still working. I mean, we have to, we have to really figure this out. Um, and then this, this is a temporal thing. It's going to pass, right? It's not, it's not forever. At some point, a pandemic turns into an endemic, right? It goes from spreading rapidly across the globe to just being just a fact of life, just like the flu, flu. just like any other virus that's been, that's endemic to our culture. We get vaccinated for lots of them. Um, so as soon as it goes from pandemic to endemic, it's going to be back business as, business as usual. People are going to want to do the things that they were previously doing that they miss um, and probably to a much larger extent. And so I think there's an opportunity there to go, think about, to, to reflect. I mean, there's, it's a wonderful opportunity to sit and reflect and think to yourself, well, how can I make my product or service better? How can I position myself better in my market so that when things do come back online and there is an uptick in activity, that you know, my business gets the majority of that traffic, whether it's online or whether it's foot traffic or whatever. Uh, and so the, one of the things that people don't do a lot of uh, is thinking, right? Just sitting and thinking about the future and how, you, how to make it better and how to make our products and services better and how to add more value. And I think that's, this is, once you batter down the hatches and you can serve as much cash as possible, then you, you put your thinking cap on and really think about how you can take advantage of um, this opportunity. Because, you know, I'm a big fan of the Stoics, you know, uh, Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, uh, and they loved crisis because yes. crisis was a time for change. You could have massive change, but only during big crisis. So, Think about how you can turn this crisis into a big opportunity for massive change and transformation. Yes. And, and every business is going to be different. So every business yeah. is going to do that differently. Well, you know, I was just talking to one of my clients just uh, a few minutes before we started this. And uh, I was talking to her and I said, um, you know, in, in, in my world of real estate, I own the, the largest elite real estate club. And I started that after I left the police force in 2005. And 2005, 2006, 2007, and partially 2008, market was a real estate market, and I made good money. And, and, and then, then I lost it all. And then 2008, 2009 is where I made the most amount of money. And I was listening to um, um, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, and he said that he made more money in 2008, 2009 than all his life. All his life. Uh, Which was, I mean, and I'm sure most people know that in 2008, uh, we had the biggest real estate meltdown other than maybe depression in the United States. So um, your point is that there's opportunities after something like this happens. So either people can um, uh, see themselves as a victim and, and say, well, this, there's no business, I can't make any money, or see, put the time for thinking and value creation spend time on how do i create value for people when this is over i mean people are going to be back to normal to do that and the opportunity to grow could be huge will be huge for people like whether they're doing full-time or part-time right all right and, then, and yeah and the key to sunil is just not to be afraid right not take, to be afraid take precautions make the right decisions but ultimately don't be afraid. Look for look for opportunities. Look for ways for improvement, right? To add value, and okay. and then put yourself in the right position when things turn around. I mean, okay. Andrew Carnegie did it. Rockefeller did it. You know. Yeah, and 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 we know this. We know when the market goes down, if the market will come back up. I mean, I'm not a financial planner or advisor or, or stockbroker and like that. But if I was. Uh, you know, if, if my bank, let's say you, you have a favorite bank or favorite drink or favorite solid company that just went down by 40% over the last 10 days, they just went down by 10, 40% because, oh, this is what's happening. We know it's fear. We know it's emotions. So people ask me, should I sell or should I buy? Well, mm. the answer is you loved that product before. Is it, is it time to buy or not? Of course it's time to buy. So, so go buy. And, and the same thing in this situation, when you, when you like, wait a minute, I'm confined to home. Basically, I can't see much. And now I have to think and I have to add value. How do I add value when, when this starts to come back? And, and your point is simply create value and spend time in thinking. Yeah. 
And well, and, and, and Warren Buffett actually is a big fan of a gentleman named Benjamin Graham. Yes, who, me too. Yeah. So he's all about fundamentals. Yes. Right. So that's what that's what Warren Buffett looks for. He looks. He doesn't look for, at the hype, or the volatility, or the price fluctuations. He just looks at the company's fundamentals. You know, do they have a good product? Do people buy it? Do they buy it again? You know, are they are they growing consistently? And based on those fundamentals, he makes his his buying decisions, because he knows after all of the hype, all of the volatility, that company will grow and be prosperous. It's all based on the fundamentals. And so you can do the same thing. You can look at your company and your business, and you can say, well, what are my fundamentals here, and how am I going to incrementally make them better over time, and what can I leverage during this particular period of time, this crisis, you know, that we're all in. Uh, to make those fundamentals better on a long-term basis. So, so uh, I, in my entire life, have never seen this the way it's been done now. Now, I've been, I was born in India and I came to Canada in 1981. Uh, so I have seen in different parts of the world where, you know, there's curfew and there's uh, riots and all that stuff. So uh, taking that aside, uh, to be able to shut down uh, everything basically, uh, and 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 then to to control this. What do you think will happen or could happen after we go from okay, everything is cool now, whether it's a, a month from now, or two months from now, or, or weeks from now? Do the buyers, do you think, buyers of your product or products in general or service in general, would? who can't go to an event like for me i can't go to an event that's like wait a minute I, this is like <laughs> i need to go to events because that's how yeah oh yeah i meet people I, I i have good food for me my brain and i meet partners and customers clients people i can do business with that's how i love it it's, it's my food and so when we're not allowed to do go to events and then now we're allowed to go to events afterward what do you think or what do you predict happen will happen with the businesses of products like yourself you're a public speaker you're a professional public speaker we have events and all what do you think will happen at that point for the people who want to attend the events um, i mean i think it might it might it, <laughs> there's a there's an old expression about you know bankruptcy how it um it happens slowly and then suddenly Right. Yes. And so I think for events coming back, it will, it will happen slowly. And then suddenly everything will be back to normal. Right. Yes. It will be, you know, people dipping their toe in the water, you know, maybe standing a little bit farther apart. You know, well, what should they then, do? What was that? What should they do? Like if somebody is smart entrepreneur, you know, after this uh, issue is, is, is reduced or eliminated or gone, now we're back to normal. What should people do? if they are used to going to events and what should they do? Not whether they're doing it or not, but what should they do? Like, are you talking about right this instant? What should no. they do? So let's say two weeks from now, a month from now, two months from now, this issue is gone. Like we, we, we've taken care of this controlled and all that stuff. Government says, hey, let's, uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna have, you're allowed to have events. What should people do? Should they stay home because? Uh, no, because, they should no. Go, go to events, go to events. events. Yeah. I mean, they have, they, they, look, Human beings are social creatures. Events are, events drive so much value, right? Not, not I mean, the most important part of the event, right, is, the, is social interaction and, and it's relationship building, period, right? If you learn something that's actionable and valuable, that's even better. Um, but if you, if you really make meaningful relationships, every meaningful relationship, and this is my background, I'm, you know, sales and business growth, but sales and business growth really comes from human relationships, right? It's about interaction and belly to belly, face to face, eye to eye interactions are the most valuable human interactions you can have. And events, events are wonderful things because they, you know, they say, Hey, we're an event about entrepreneurship or we're an event about real estate. And everybody goes, well, I like real estate or I like entrepreneurship. And they self-identify, right? They self-select and then they go to see and meet and talk with a bunch of other like-minded people. And it's, you can almost chart your own personal financial success, professional success, based on the events that you went to. Yes. Right? You can almost say like, I went to this event, I met that person and that helped this. Yes. Then I went to this event and I, I made this partner and that catalyzed growth over here. And then because that happened, I went to this event 
And so you can chart your entire success, both personally and professionally and financially, based on the events that you've attended. I and agree. so I think people are going to come back. I think people are going to come back to events. I think, there, I think there's going to be a lot of pent up demand for events. I think oh, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely. Past, yeah, there's going to be a lot of desire for more social interaction because people will realize what they've missed. And I think that's going to be a wonderful, a wonderful thing too, is people are going to realize, wow, like, and I, I didn't know how important all of those things were to me until they were gone. Well, that's a good news for um, a lot of uh, trainers, uh, people in the uh, area of uh, personal growth, business growth, monetization, uh, trainers, uh, author, uh, coaches, mentors, speakers. This is a good news for them. At the end of the day, uh, people need you and, and all. And, and this is very important to do that kind of stuff. So for me, I mean, uh, your point of uh, about going to events, I mean, I could not have made millions if I was not going to events. It's just would have not happened. It's right. just the way it is where, you know, and most of my business partners, my affiliates, my business growth, my investors who uh, helped me fund my real estate projects came from events. Right. It's just the way it was. Absolutely. And they pre-selected themselves by being in that room because they want to do it. They want to be in that room. They don't be forced them. They, 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 some of them even paid to be in that room. That's awesome. So that's awesome. Yeah. So let's, let's finish off by talking about current situation and business because I think people are listening to this, they thing. okay, what do we do now? Like what mm -hmm. do we do with business? How do we change from what we used to do to what we are doing? So what are some of the things that you're doing that would help generate cash flow in the near future or, or now or, or months from now? Yeah, well, so I'm, I'm like doubling and tripling down on my virtual strategy. So I'm, I'm, I'm building revenue streams, re revenue streams online, uh, which I think is very important to diversify where your income comes from. I've already been doing that, but it's, this has been a reminder that this, this needs to be a much bigger part of my strategy is to really help and design virtual training that, that works and that people want to stick to. Uh, it's engaging. Um, from a sales perspective, you know, one of the hardest parts of sales is, is getting a hold of your qualified prospects, right? And speaking to the people that can buy your product or service. Well, uh, everyone's at home. Like, you know where they are now. <laughs> They're home. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's a wonderful time to be prospecting, I think, to be going out and trying to forge those relationships. So when things do turn around, you've got a whole list of people that, you know, you've you know now you've interacted with you've shared your value and they they're interested in, in either booking you to train or to speak or to come to you know your workshop or invest in real estate or buy your whatever it is you everybody's at home right and everybody's sitting there going well how do i do this like how do i get through this situation well start start interacting with people as much as possible like through zoom through skype on the phone you know everybody's this is if you're busy and you're moving around and you're going from event to event and somebody calls you, you go, look, I don't have time for this right now. I, I'm, I, you know, I might be curious about it, but I just don't have time. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm moving. I'm shaking. I'm, I'm making things happen. Well, now they're just sitting at home. <laughs> so now's the time, right? You're not busy. We know you're not busy because you're, you're, you're quarantined, you know, or whatever. <laughs> like you're, you're at home. Like you can take my call. We can have this conversation now. And they're probably much more receptive to it now. Because I agree. I agree. They're, they're thinking about the future. They're like, well, maybe, maybe let's have this conversation. Maybe, okay. maybe I'll we'll book you for my next event. Maybe I should try virtual training or, or whatever it is. So give me, a, give me an idea. Somebody who is a coach, a mentor, consultant, a speaker, an entrepreneur that sells some sort of a service that benefits people, um, including you know how to deal with fear, for example, or including how to stay calm and how to be how to grow personally from the inside and how to monetize your business and all that stuff. What do they do online? How how do they find people? And and what kind of process should they have uh, to monetize when maybe they were used to doing face to face meeting? Maybe what I mean was step one, uh, get a domain name. Step two, get this. Like, what, what steps would you say? Well, okay, yeah. establish some sort of online presence, right? And it, what's cool is like, you don't necessarily need a website to start because there's lots of different platforms that enable you to build profiles, uh, plug in videos and pictures. I mean, you can, you can go to Wix. 
Wix or Squarespace, you know, just real quick, you can throw a flip website real fast. I think ultimately there's three lead sources, right? There's, there's uh, your, your well, right? Which is your phone, right? It's all the contacts on your phone. And if you call those contacts, you don't sell them your services. What you say is, Hey, this is what I do. This is my mission. Here's my big goal. Um, do you know anybody that would benefit from a conversation with me, right? If you call all the appropriate contacts on your phone or you text them, you're going to get leads through that. So that's your first, that's your first go-to, right? Everybody's got about 500 contacts on their phone right now that they can, they can tap and you don't ask them, you don't, you're not selling them anything. You're just asking them if they know anyone that would benefit from a conversation with you after you've sh showed or demonstrated or, or, or stated the results that you deliver. The other two lead sources, right, are, a, you know, you can imagine it as like a field, right? It's, it needs to be cultivated and planted. Like that's your social strategy. It's your content strategy. So you, it's about developing interesting content and then posting it out, right? I, I, ideally evergreen content, the content that lasts forever. It's always relevant. Um, so not so much about the coronavirus, but about, you know, your ongoing value, interesting content, things that you have to, you know, think about, insights that you have after reading several, several books, or articles or industry periodicals, you have to get that content out on the internet so people can discover it and ultimately discover you. And then the last lead strategy is your paid strategy. Once you've figured out what people like through those two things, then you can start paying for leads through Google, through Google ads, Facebook ads, et cetera. But you really need to understand what content's gonna resonate and what your value proposition should be. And so you can start developing the content today, right? You can start making those phone calls right now you can start validating your value proposition and then, you know, build, build a, build an engine, right? Which is the paid lead strategy, build an engine that produces leads on a regular basis. And then you can actually scale your business. So, I mean, that's that, I mean, if we're, if we're all stuck at home, you know, let's make, let's make the best use of this time. You know, let's, let's, let's prospect, let's build up our lead strategies. And so when it all passes, you know, we're in, we're in the best possible position to grow our business. Now I, I, I'm looking at my phone and I love your dad, uh, Brian Tracy, and, um, and jokingly he texted me back about how to make money. And he says, the only way to generate cash flow is to sell more of your products and service and collect payment. <laughs> and it sounds, <laughs> it sounds so simple, but it actually it. is where, where it is. I mean, you talked yeah. about creating value. And, and then, and then now you talked about how to uh, get the leads or how to how to be in front of people, mm -hmm. and uh, the three ways that you talked about. And then, of course, whoever's is going to be benefiting it. Obviously, they're going to pay for it. And and then, and and the idea here is to deliver your products and services now via uh, online, which is you, we talked about Zoom. We got link. Uh, we got uh, we got uh, a Skype. We got phone. However, we do that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. It's what, what, WhatsApp, WeChat, you know, the, Viper. What I mean, there's like a gajillion different ways to connect with people. Um, direct message, like every social platform is a direct message now. So you don't even have to know somebody. You just find them on Instagram or Facebook, and then you can just, you know, say, hey, let's let's connect. Or, let's connect this way, um, which right. is which is ultimately the the new cold call. Like you don't actually call people and try to sell them stuff because the auto dialers have ruined that opportunity for, for salespeople. Yeah. But the message uh, function is a wonderful way to initiate cold contacts without Absolutely. being intrusive or annoying. So well, you should well, what's your, what's your, give me an example of a text or message you would send on Facebook I'm, uh, to somebody that you connected and somebody who you haven't connected with. So, so what I mean by that is that sometimes I get a message from strangers right away saying, hey, um, uh, I'd like you to lend me a million dollars because I have a project and they don't know me. They, they, just, they just saw me on internet. They, they, they saw my video. And the first message is that, which is, which is, and sometimes they'll connect with me and immediately after they connect with me, I get a message uh, on LinkedIn or on Facebook, which is, you know, how, how, you know I was wondering if you'll lend me a million dollars, for example. What would you say to what? What would you say would be the right approach for somebody who maybe for first one that you and I just can, we are connected, so now we are under this circumstances, and you're going to send you and I know each other and pretend we are connected on Facebook. What would be the right message, at least the initial one or ones, that you would contact me, assuming that I am a real estate person who 
lends money and who does joint ventures with people and all that stuff. What would you, how would you change that? Yeah, and I'm putting would, you on spot right now. So yeah, no, no, I, I think, I think it's a, it's a valid question. Yeah. Cause you, you just throw out your, you know, your request to do business. Hey, give me a million dollars or, Hey, I do sales training. It's great. You know, you should, you should get some. I, I would focus on the person, right? Those profiles aren't business profiles. You're not sending a message to a business. You're sending a message to a person, right? That person has their own values, their own interests, you know, their own goals. You need to figure out something about that person that's interesting to you and then engage them where they are, you know, uh, you know, so be, get interested in other people. You know, if you're just interested in, in, in making money, you're going to throw out like these, you know, arbitrary requests to do business. Hey, you, you, through to 30, you know, increase your sales 30% in 90 days and you'll know, call me back. And it's like, nobody's going to do that. Right. You, you, have to, you have to say, Hey, I noticed that you're in this particular industry. Um, how is, you know, how's business these days? Um, I have some interesting things I'd love to share with you that I've found from other clients in the same industry. If you're interested, right. Let's, 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 let's start the conversation, but, and let's, let's make it a value based exchange. Let's, let's figure out how to exchange, figure out how to deliver value up front, right? Because awesome. then that changes the, the dynamic of the relationship. Awesome. Uh, let's pretend that you do not know me yet. And, uh, and then, you know, we're not connected on any platform, but you want to, right? Maybe it's LinkedIn, maybe it's Facebook, you get to pick and, and, and you connect. How, how would you go about going, um, let's call it after, if you wanted me as your client, for example, how would you do that if you're not connected with me yet? So if, if I wasn't connected with you yet, Sunil, I would, I would do something. I'd find out information about you, right? I go to your website. Yes. I look at, um, your organization, you know, I read, read one of your books, right? I would, I would get interested in you and I'd find something that you, that you would resonate with. And I I'd contact you and I'd say, Hey, Sunil, I read in your book that you said, if you want it bad enough, you know, you got it, you got to reach out to the people who can make it happen for you. And you know, that really resonated with me. That's why I'm reaching out to you. Do you have five minutes? It. Can we talk? Right. And then you're complimented because I've read your book. I know you now. I now I know how to engage with you because I know your values. I've read your book. Or I've, I've I've researched you. I think that, that there's there's you know they used to call it pre-call research. You know, you used to actually have to learn something about who you were going to try to talk to before you tried to talk to them. And I think that that's a lost art. So I think that I mean that's how I would engage you. I would find out what your values are. I would read your book. I'd research your organization. And then when I when I actually did initiate contact, I'd have something that you would recognize, right? You would you'd say, hey, well, he actually did read my book. I did say that. <laughs> and and, and is, so, so when you contacted me, would you connect with me first and then say that? Or would you, how would you connect with me, let's say on LinkedIn or on Facebook uh, when you're sending a message? Like how, how what would you do? I, I mean, so, I mean, it depends on, if it was, it was me contacting you, I would yes. probably send a message saying, hey, Sunil, I read your book. I'd love to be connected on LinkedIn. Ah, right? yeah. And you'd be like, totally, right? Yes, I mean, yes. you, why wouldn't you accept that? You totally yes. would. And then, you know, after an appropriate period of time, a couple of days, I'd come back and say, hey, you know, Sunil, I've got this interesting, you know, real estate op opportunity. And I'm, I'm really confused as to whether or not it's going to be profitable. Um, would you be, you know, would you, you here, here's, here's the, the prospectus or here's the proposal or whatever. Would you take three minutes and just you know, give me your thoughts, you know, I, I, maybe, I, maybe, maybe you can't do that. So maybe there's a time constraint, uh, yes, but yes. either way, we're now connected. I'm, I'm requesting assistance or support. And you can say, look, I've got an organization that supports people like you. Yes. Right. And now, and now there's a value exchange, right? I, I need the advice and the guidance. I need the mentors and the support. Um, and you can plug me into a, a, a group like that. So I get the support I need, and then maybe you know you you become an investor in the transaction. So yes. I, you know, but it's, I think th there is no quick transactions when it comes to people, right? It's about building relationships and being genuine and honest. Love it, love it. Okay, last question. Um, <clears throat> I, I hear uh, market is slowing down, market is crashing, market will be crashing or going down, and, and the impact on it. What's your take on that in, 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 in the next few months uh, in regards to the market? And, and that could be overall market. It could be real estate market. It could be 
stock market or it could be like overall market? Yeah, I think it's a buying opportunity. I mean, I, I would wait until things kind of turn around a little bit, but you know, I mean, if, if you have cash, I think it's going to be a wonderful time to get into some, some things. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to give you timing because I don't know the timing. Of course. We're, we're, uh, but yeah, we're, things, we're, things will get depressed, you know, because of, because of fear and hope, right? <laughs> it's, we're going through a hopeful cycle of growth, and now we're going through a fearful cycle of selling. And at some point, people will realize that things are really inexpensive now. And there'll be some growth back in the market and there'll be, it'd be a wonderful time to buy things. I mean, I think that in the U S interest rates are effectively zero now. Right. Yeah. So free money. Yeah, right. So it's, that's pretty incredible. Um, you can, I mean, so, uh, long story short, it's, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. I think it's gonna be a wonderful buying opportunity when things turn around. The when is the question mark. Absolutely. So, and we don't have, and none of that money's gone by the way. It's just not in the market, right? Yeah. It's just now it's just sitting on the sidelines waiting for the right time to get back into the market. And there's going to be a lot of people who will chase the bottom, um, you know, but be prudent, wait till things start turning around, make the best decisions, be in a good position to make those decisions quickly. Identify, I mean, if you're in real estate, like most of, most, most of your associates are, Sunil, uh, you know, find some properties, look at some properties, track them, you know, start, start, you know, cataloging them and then diversify your opportunity list so that when the time comes, you can get into two or three properties that you, you probably can't now because the prices are too high. Awesome. Um, how do people get hold of you, Mike? Um, so I, I have a, my website salesjourney.com, right? So if you just want some cool sales and business growth tips, you can subscribe to my newsletter. It's the awesome. first thing that you'll see on that website, salesjourney.com. If you have any questions about like sales training, tactical sales training, business growth education, um, after you've gone to my website, you can always email me. It's michael at michaeltracy.io. Michael at michaeltracy.io. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. I just wanted to say that uh, I like to give gift to uh, everyone that's listening. Um, Mike, Michael, you talked about the fear. We talked about the people are scared and all that stuff. I actually had uh, a, 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 a hypnosis specially made for myself, um, and it's called How to Kill Fear. And, uh, and it's basically something you listen to. So, so like Michael said, you, you need to do the stuff that you need to do to protect yourself. But do we need to be paralyzed or, uh, with fear? And that's the question. So under these situations, I'd like to gift all of you a, um, a, a hypnosis program that was just made for myself and my members that uh, we, it's not available to anybody. It's totally exclusive. And all you have to do is just send, send, send uh, my office an email info at privateinvestmentclub.com. Info at privateinvestmentclub.com. Send an email and we'll just gift it to you for sure. During this time, it could be a lifesaver. Um, we're looking forward to having you, Mike and um, Michael, in, in Ottawa, of course, in August. And, 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 and of course, your dad uh, coming via a live uh, video call as well as some of the amazing speakers that are gonna be there with Jane and Steve Lowell. Thank you very much for being on this a wonderful interview. I really appreciate you. Hey, thank you, Sunil. I appreciate you too. Take, okay. Stay, Take stay, 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 stay well. You too, man. Take good care. Bye-bye. Bye, Sunil.